Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for being here today. I really, really appreciate it. And I'm super excited to work with all of you. I've heard so many good things about Global Nomads and I'm really excited to hear your guys' voices today. Thank you all so much for being here. We are developing a um, learning experience for teenagers in US high schools. And the goal is to use the Cold War um, as an era in a history class to talk about power and diplomacy, to understand power and diplomacy. So we're really looking at what, what did it take to be diplomatic and to keep the peace during a time like that? Um, and what did the power, what did the different power plays look like? So they're gonna be building their own toolkits um, where they're really figuring out how do you be a diplomat in the world? How do you keep peace? Um, but how do you still get what you want, but without using um, terror and threats of nuclear destruction? So what are some other ways to, to get what you want in this world? All right, so I am gonna share my screen and also a link to a Jamboard. I want you all to be able to feel free to, um, as we're going, share either by writing a post-it note on the Jamboard, um, which you do over here, just by clicking a sticky note, anybody can create one and put it on the screen um, if you haven't used Jamboard before, or feel free to just say your response if you don't wanna mess with making a sticky note and we can always write what you said. Let's talk a little bit about polarization, which was like the main theme of the Cold War and still something that's happening today in our world. Um, with a show of fingers from one to five, how divided do you feel the world is today? Five, I see four, Let's see, yeah, I don't think I see any twos or ones. What's the evidence you see of division? I think, well, the division I mostly see is hierarchy where um, there's a lot of division between the higher class and the lower class. So that's um, a noticeable division I see mostly in my country. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. I see hate crimes, systematic racism and hate, economic inequality. Yes. What else? Think about behaviors you're seeing from people, headlines, events. Religion-based bias, racism. Anyone else want a little more time? Okay, bullying and crimes towards minorities. Well, I was thinking you did homophobia and transphobia. Oh, yes. I see that in the chat. Yeah, let me add that. Okay. What evidence of unity is there? We didn't all say five, so maybe there's something. Support groups, charity work, organizations helping with including members of all races, genders, and groups. I'd also like to add that um, unity, I feel like religion plays a um, huge role in unity, especially from people from different backgrounds. Okay, this is great. Thank you guys for all these amazing ideas. I love that sports is on here. Yes, <laughs> this is great. Social media, yeah. So I'm gonna move forward and ask what tools do we need to combat division, to manage conflict and to unite people? What tools do you need um, at a micro level? And then what tools do you also need, you know, wanna see leaders have? Um, I think education is the building block of unity and um, people being more inf informed and educated leads to more understanding and acceptance um, between one another, of one another. Yes. Love that. Raise a sense of humanity. A leader that reminds people we're all human. Also, social media, as you can see, the genocide that's happening right now. Like, if there is a, if you have a platform, you need to speak out about it and not neglect it, so you can combat division and manage conflict, as you said. 
So communication is important and social media is one tool for that. Moving on to four, what do you call the person who combats division, manages conflict and unites people? What would you, what term would you use for someone who's up to that in the world? Okay, an activist, a diplomatic leader. What do you think? I'm so curious about the um, diplomat has come up a couple of times. Who can, who, who can be a diplomat? Well, I think um, being a leader is something and being a diplomatic leader is another. Mm. And which if like, um, if we're lucky to have a diplomatic leader, it's like, I feel like it's a more like an adjective. Um, so it gives the, this leader um, a mindset that helps him to be more flexible and, and accept other ideas in which uh, he would see um, others, not only uh, what he or his group wants. Man. All right. If everyone could just be like you guys, I think we'd all be good. <laughs> I think it would be good. <laughs> you guys are incredible. Awesome. This is great. Okay. Reformer. Yes. All right. Another big question for you. What is power? And just first thing that comes to mind, what does it look like? What does it mean? Who has it? Money. Influence, control. Control, control. yeah. Okay, so Yeah. This is great. Yep. Authority, titles, positions. I guess it could be influence. Like power can be based on the ability to shape opinions or attitudes um, and behaviors through persuasion or charisma, maybe. Mm. Influence and force. Okay. These are great. So I think you guys really got at it already. Um, when we talk about different forms of power, people argue that there is this idea of power too, meaning you have the power to do something. You realize that you can have an influence on the world. There's power over, which usually falls into the realm of control. And then there's power with, which usually is more along the lines of what we were saying about influence and persuasion. So I would love to hear a little bit about where you see each of those forms of power in your own life. Um, and maybe think about it from the lens of school. I would love like some specific examples. Bullying is power over. Grades. Ooh, grades is an interesting one, yeah. The teacher's bias, mm, yeah. Student bodies and clubs administration, supportive family. Yeah. Uh, if we feel like something is wrong with institution, like um, the canteen food is not good or something like that, we uh, as students can come together and do something about it. So it's believing that you have the power to influence. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next frame. I would love to hear what your thoughts are about power in current events. How are each of these pieces showing up in a current a current event or um, just what you're seeing sort of, yeah, war. Yeah. Genocide, filter bubbles. Ooh. Such a good one. Unity of a nation and power with, yeah. News channels feeding the public information from a single perspective. Okay, guys, this is great. 
Thank you so much. This is fantastic. So how did you feel your voice was represented in this conversation? Thumbs up for yes, thumbs middle for not really, thumbs down for definitely not. Okay. Good. You're feeling good. Amazing. I want to say that um, I came into the session having my own expectation to be a little bit hard, uh, but I find it to be very entertaining and not hard at all. Just like um, an opposite of my expectations, but I'm very happy to be here. Aww. Awesome. Thank you. We're so happy that you're here. The ideas that you had were so useful. I really appreciated how everyone participated. Um, this was really fun. Thank you guys so much for being here. And I'm really excited to see you guys again in two weeks to see what we've done. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank so much. You. Bye. 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 Bye.